so what are the next steps? Well, the next steps are um, firstly for us to investigate what we're calling this attenuation or this transmission gap. So we're saying we can make a big difference to this parent-child interaction. Um, that in itself may be very important. So uh, it may help parents' morale. It may help the relationship in a general sense with the child, which may have a lot of downstream benefits. So one of the things we want to do next is to study that, to look in how these children have developed over time, over the next few years, to see whether indeed improving that relationship has, as you'd expect intuitively, because uh, um, you know, regular children, their relationship with their parent is a very important aspect of their life, and it has, we know from other research, has a lot of good benefit downstream in terms of adjustment, mental health, uh, happiness, et cetera. So, my hope, my, my expectation really, is that we'll show downstream effects of a similar kind with the autistic children. Um, so we're looking at that, and then we'll want to look very carefully at what we are calling this transmission gap, this difficulty in generalizing, which is really common to all autism treatments. This isn't just our, there isn't a single other autism treatment uh, yet that's reported in a good study that's shown this kind of general uh, transmission of a generalized effect. Um, we showed it in our pilot study. So in our pilot study, the kids did improve outside the dyad, and that's what gave us a lot of hope for this study. So we were disappointed that we couldn't show it in the big study. But um, what we're going to be looking at is, is the reason why we can't do that generalization, and whether, uh, by having understood the reason, whether we can put some extra help in, some adjunct treatment, to help that generalization out. So we think we've got a good platform. The next step is to build on that to help the generalization into the child's regular life out in the community. And that's a real challenge. We, we know that children with autism have a difficulty to generalize learning for, for across contexts. And so any treatment we do in any context, we've got to try and help the child generalize it out. And that's, that's our challenge for our next phase of, phase of work when we follow these children up. One issue we often see with treatment studies is they are very much dependent on the skills of the researchers who are administering the treatment. And in a large study like this, you must have had many different adults who were uh, giving the treatment. Yeah. Did, did that come into play at all? I mean, could that be one of the reasons why you didn't see the effect that you expected? Uh, uh, no, uh, in short answer to that's no. It's true that um, one of the features of this kind of treatment trial is that we train up the therapists really well. And uh, um, we specifically, there were six therapists who delivered the therapy in this trial. We particularly chose therapists who weren't the most experienced. We didn't want the most experienced people. We didn't want people fresh out of training school either. We wanted people who had a little bit of experience, but not too much. Yeah, we trained them up well and uh, they did a great job in training the parents up. I think the, the good thing, as I said previously, is that we, a lot of people have felt that parent training programs like this only work with certain kinds of parents, you know, more committed or more middle class or more socially favored or whatever. And we really show that that's not the case. We can, uh, we can make this change with the parents across the board with this kind of intervention. So. Uh, the therapist skill, we didn't show any differential effect by that. And it's one of the limitations of treatment studies, actually, is that generally you, you design them so you get really good therapists. And out in the real world, when you're applying the treatment, of course it'll vary. And it's difficult to control for that. It's an interesting issue. But obviously the, um, you know, the, 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 the implication of that is you've got to train up your therapists well out in the community. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to add before we finish? Um, well, I think um, uh, the main thing I want to say is that uh, we are uh, proud to have completed this trial. It, as I said before, is the largest trial that's been done, and it raises the kind of profile of autism treatment into a different level. So, um, uh, to have uh, uh, previously the, the kind of treatment studies in, in this area, including our own previous one, have been on small samples. The methodology hasn't always been brilliant, um, and, and so this, we, we, we feel and we're proud that this study raises the bar in terms of methodology, uh, and the fact that it's being published in The Lancet, which is uh, one of the most pres prestigious medical journals in the, in the world, is uh, you know, testimony to that. 
And we're, we feel good about that because it raises the profile of autism treatment uh, internationally. And it says, yeah, we can do trials of complex problems of this kind to that degree of, of, of rigor. Uh, and what I would like to see is that um, other people, um, our colleagues internationally, follow this kind of lead. And we know that um, funding bodies are increasingly providing large funds now for treatment studies, which means that colleagues can, uh, can do treatment studies like this. And so uh, what we know from other areas of medicine is that if you're really going to make progress, it's slow, small steps. And each treatment trial gives you really interesting results, both positive and negative, and you build on that in the next trial. Colleagues elsewhere do the same thing. They try and replicate what you did. And everything. And these, these small steps amongst the community of people doing these trials that makes progress. You don't get slam dunk, you know, massive change necessarily in a complex problem like this. It's uh, small steps. And we know from, as I say, other areas of medicine where this has happened. Um, childhood leukemia is a very nice example where um, before the onset of this series of treatment trials that was done of, of this kind of thing, in this kind of way, um, most children died of leukemia. And uh, over a period of around 15 years, a series of treatment trials of this randomized type were done, uh, one after the other, building on each one, incremental change each time. And the, that had the effect of shifting the, um, the life expectancy so that uh, children with leukemia have a 80% uh, chance of uh, good survival now, as opposed to very little chance before. And so. What I really hope is that we can build a series of trials like this for autism so that over in 10, 15 years' time we'll have achieved something similar for uh, our patients. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Okay.